so let's wrap up this discussion of displacement to Kara. So I guess uh, I'm going to describe what I'll do as a brainstorm or stream of consciousness, because this is what I have so far. I know where I want to get to. I want to have some quantity that will lead me to say this IN close to being zero doesn't matter. It's as if it's the same current that's coming in. And I know this current is related to this uh, change of electric field. But I have no formula that's giving me that direct connection. So um, I don't know if you guys have done any stream of consciousness writing. I'm just going to start from one point. And I'm just going to write down all the relationships I know, hoping that uh, from this starting point, uh, I will somehow be able to get to this end point that contains a term with this and all the other coefficients that I need with it. So let me just <laughs> um, start that as some kind of stream of consciousness or brainstorm. I don't know what the correct term would be. So you know, ideally, this is something that you could do with a lot more time in group setting, but I don't really have that time. So let me just uh, 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 speed through it. So I'm just going to start out with a current. Current is something that I know. That's the place I would start from. So when you do something like this, sometimes uh, um, you might want to go backwards, like start from the end point and go the other way. But um, my preference almost always to go in the forward direction. It's only when you get stuck that you at least consider backward direction. This is, by the way, the same with any kind of mathematical proofs you might do. Um, so I start out with a current. So I have current I naught coming in. Uh, what is this current? What else is this current related to that I can write down some equations for? Chris? OK, current is related to uh, V over R. Now, in this setup, is there any register anywhere? So yeah, there is no register. So this relationship is there. I might write it down as I'm brainstorming. But it probably won't get me to where I want. But you know, you can write it down, and it's the whole idea of brainstorm. You don't, not everything you write down has to be correct. But hopeful. so as you're doing this, you have to critically think for yourself. You know, does this relate to my end goal? And when you recognize it doesn't, label it as dead end and um, try something else. Uh, uh, anything else? It's also the rate of change of charge over time. Yeah, so this is, that's the other relationship, right? When you have capacitor, the amount of current coming in is related to rate of change of the charge on the capacitor that you had to, with when you are dealing with the circuit. So this current is the rate of change of the amount of charge on the capacitor. All right, so I can go from current to charge on the capacitor. Now, I guess what I want to express, so I see that this is going somewhere because it's uh, having to do the capacitor. Now, um, hmm, does, is there a way this directly relates to electric field? Charge on capacitor with electric field. Does anyone remember the formulas? This is where a good knowledge of, um, this is where why I keep telling you to memorize <laughs> formulas. When you're doing brainstorm like this, um, it's a lot easier if you don't also have to look through your formula sheet. If you can just uh, scroll through what's already in your head. So let me you know, speed through this portion. I'll just write down the formulas that I do have memorized. This, these are the set of formulas that were useful for dealing with a capacitor. If I have parallel play capacitor setup, or more precisely, it's a parallel infinite plane of charged particles. I have a, a charge density of plus a sigma on one, minus a sigma on the other. Then the, with this setup, do people remember what the electric field between those two are? Yes, no? Permittivity of, yeah, sigma over epsilon naught. Sigma over, I prefer to call it electric constant because permittivity, permeability, who knows what they mean. <laughs> but you do know that epsilon naught has to do with electricity. Yeah? 
So this is the formula that hopefully you have memorized. This is the electric field in between parallel play capacitor. Yeah. Once you remember this much, then now you recognize that the sigma has something to do with the charge. That's the charge density, Q over A. So you know we started out by saying it's an infinite play capacitor. But in a real capacitor, it's going to have some finite area A. So let's, uh, let me rewrite, down, rewrite this electric field as Q over A over epsilon naught. All right, it seems like I can actually rewrite this. So um, let me rewrite it this way. So I'm going to take this expression, electric field magnitude is equal to this right hand side and solve this for Q. I can say Q is equal to um, area times E or area times epsilon naught times E. All right, so <laughs> epsilon naught times area times E. Okay. Um, all right, so um, continuing with this uh, line of thought, I can take this plug it in here and see what happens. When I take this and plug it in here, I get rate of change of time, I mean rate of change with respect to time uh, of epsilon naught A electric field magnitude. Um, epsilon naught is a constant, right? That's a electric constant. Um, area, it's a constant, right? Now, what is it area of? Because this is a common situation that people get into where you have more than one um, variable representing a type of quantity and you get them mixed up. People do that every single time with the, the, the E over M experiment that a lot of you did. You have more than one circle, so you get radius for one circle mixed up with the radius for other circle. So here, I want to be careful. Which area are we talking about? Are we talking about these areas that are being defined by Amperian loop? Or is it some other area? I see that I have drawn it confusingly. Let me draw my capacitor a little bit smaller so that you can see the cross-sectional area of a capacitor which might be represented by this, is significantly smaller than the Amperian loop um, area. Which area are we talking about? Yeah, this area, cross-sectional area of the capacitor, right? Because that was the sense in which we are using A every single time. It's a charge on capacitor over area of the capacitor. So here, this is still area of the capacitor. So, um, yeah. So, um, I guess nothing actually stops us from writing it down this way. We could write it down this way. Epsilon naught A times D dt. Epsilon naught A times D dt. But I'm kind of looking forward or backward to how this expression is written. And when I write this down, I want it to have some kind of similarity to some stuff I already have. So this, um, remember the definition of magnetic flux. Magnetic flux was magnetic field times the area. I mean, you know, if you are being picky about it, this is actually the dot product between the two vector quantities. And if you are being really picky about it, then you know it's actually if magnetic field is not uniform, then you have to imagine integrating it. So you know there are all those uh, refinements that you might want to worry about depending on the problem. But at the very basic level, magnetic flux is magnetic field times area. So we want to do the same thing here and express area times electric field as the electric flux. So say that this is the quantity that we are going to define as the electric flux. It's not like this is the first time you are seeing electric flux. 
this is also electric flux. Except every time this came up, I kept saying, I don't care about electric flux. <laughs> Apparently you do, um, depending on the situation. So we do that symbol. This is how we would write down the final version of this uh, line of expressions. Starting from this I naught, we would say, well, this relates to the charge on the capacitor, which relates to the electric field, uh, which leads to this final relationship. So epsilon naught is still constant. Let me pull it out. Epsilon naught times rate of change of the electric flux. So this is where you end up. That if you have certain amount of current coming into the capacitor, you can say that that is going to be related to how much the electric flux through this area is changing. And actually, I say electric flux through this area, but it's electric flux through this entire area since outside of this um, electric field is zero. So when you imagine doing that whole area integral, that reduces down to E times this area in the end anyway, when you do it properly. Okay. So, so this is what we are going to call displacement current. This is the quantity. So this is the quantity that we are going to end up calling displacement current. This is displacement current. And this is probably a good place to ask this question. Um, in what sense is that like a current? In what sense is the rate of change of electric flux like a current? Is there a movement of charge involved through this surface? Through this surface? No, I mean, there has to be movement of some charge elsewhere for the electric field to be changing, right? But when you are looking locally, locally here, there's no charge that's moving across here. So in what sense is this quantity, which is, you know, the name for this quantity is displacement current. So it must have something to do with, um, well, I guess the, these words must mean something. The word current must mean something. The word displacement, um, that's actually a harder one to explain. It's an old fashioned term. Yes? Because it, it modifies the current side of the flux? That's really the biggest reason. It, uh, um, this is the quantity that we are going to pretend is something that acts like a current here. It's going to enter into here. So the modified version of Ampere's law will look like this. If this additional term, it will have this coefficient of mu naught, just like the other term, it will be mu naught times displacement to current. So the sense in which this is like a current is sort of similar sense in which if V cross B was like an electric field. You see that here they are being added together, and I would not add them together unless they are like each other in some sense. And here, I guess, if, uh, you, if you had to go one step further, you could say this is like a current in the same sense that current can generate magnetic field, and this also generates magnetic field the same way current does. But um, in, uh, beyond that, what this quantity is? Well, it's a rate of change of electric field. And um, I think the phrase displacement is a little bit, um, you know, I don't actually know the history of the term. What I do know from upper division electrodynamics is that there's a quantity called the displacement field. The displacement field was defined as epsilon naught times E. If it's in vacuum, this would be epsilon naught. If it's in matter, then this would be the permittivity of the material. So this is the quantity called the displacement field in upper division electrodynamics. And I'm pretty sure that term displacement comes from this term displacement. And if I had to stretch and guess why is this called the displacement, I would guess that has something to do with the separation of charge. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but really what I want you to take away is that this acts like a current in the sense that it generates magnetic field. Exactly the same way current does. 
And we express that here with the modification of Ampere's law. We have this one additional term to Ampere's law now. Uh, instead of simply saying uh, magnetic field is, this line integral of magnetic field is mu naught i enclosed, we say it's, well, that plus mu naught times that epsilon naught the electric flux or rate of change of electric flux. This is the term we call Maxwell term. And this is the uh, last term of Maxwell's equations. With this, these four equations are combined are called the Maxwell's equation. And this is the, it's a representation, statement of our complete understanding of uh, um, electromagnetism.